Welcome to my channel. This is an indication of some of the things that I cover on a regular basis in my videos. If you haven't already subscribed, please feel free to do so. And don't forget to click the little bell so that you'll get notified of future videos. Please feel free to share my videos on your social media. And I hope you enjoy the video which follows. Well, hello everybody. I'm going to be making some wild blackberry jam. Angel and I are just back from picking these wild blackberries, little jewels. Should have gone yesterday, I think. I, we were walking a trail yesterday and there were lots of them, so I went back to the same trail today. And uh, Either somebody else is watching the trail or the birds have discovered them. There weren't so many there, but I've got enough. I need three cups of crushed berries, and those are the fresh ones that I just picked. But I've also been picking and freezing. About 10 days or so now. So I've got more than more than what I need, I think. I can get that over there without dumping them all over the counter. There we go. I'll just cover that and uh, leave it overnight to uh, thaw out and make them in the morning. I'm going to be using this product, which I only discovered last year. I don't know how many years it's been available in Canada. It's made by the large uh, sugar producing company called Atlantic and the, they're making it under the uh, brand name of Rogers. All it is is the amount of sugar that you need to make the recipe and it already has the pectin mixed in. Never seen that in Canada before but I have seen uh, videos from the UK of people using it. I'll show you the brand name there. And I certainly have seen it being used by people in Australia. So I know it's very common in other places. I, I guess I had never seen it before last year. I used two or three different bags of it last year making different kinds of jams and jellies and it really works beautifully. So I've purchased more to use this year. See you in the morning. Well, day two and they have completely thawed. We'll try mashing them and see what we get, I guess. Because I think I said I need three and a half cups of mashed fruit of any kind, berries or whatever, to make a jam with the product that I'm using. I'm quite sure I have enough here, I hope anyway. bring you back when I finish stomping on them. We're using my favorite jam making pot. It's actually a pressure cooker that I haven't used as a pressure cooker in years because I have an instant pot now. But I like it for jam making because it has a very thick heavy bottom. Which is a good thing jam isn't so apt to uh, burn or whatever. It's a nice heavy bottomed pot that you're using. And there's three cups. Three and a half. And I have some left over but not enough for a second batch I don't think. Now to add the other ingredients, this is the sugar and mectin, pectin mixture. And to that you add two tablespoons of lemon juice. And when this, a recipe like this calls for lemon juice, you don't use fresh lemons. Uh, this is a botan product called Real Lemon, I guess, but you use the bottom bottled one because it's a standardized product, so you know the level of acid in it. If you buy fresh lemons, if it was really ripe, it wouldn't have a high enough acid level, and that's what we're doing here is adding acid. Um, a little bit of lemon added to all this is never going to show up as a, as a flavor, but it's required 
get it to can and for the pectin to work properly. Next is to move over to the stove. It dissolves quite well, quite quickly. Well, I've just turned the gas on under this, so I've got a, a bit of time before it comes to a full rolling boil. Once it comes to the full boil, you stir constantly and let it boil for four minutes. Then you shut the heat off and stir for another five minutes before you put it in the bottles. It should make something in excess of three uh, half liter or pint jars, 500 milliliter jars. Should be three at least and then some left over. So I have uh, sterilized four jars and have them sitting here ready just in case I need them. If there's just a bit left over, I'll still put it in the last jar and uh, refrigerate it and use it soon. And I'll bring you back when this thing comes to a full boil. Well, while waiting for this to come to the boil, I did measure what I have left over. I only need another half cup and I can make a second batch, so I think later today I will go out and pick a few more blackberries and assuming this one goes well, I will do a second batch. It's getting very close to coming to a boil there now, sort of around the edges. Well, that's a pretty good boil and I have started the four minute timer. They're little black jewels when you pick them, but once it comes to a boil here, it's almost a cherry color, I guess. The ones that I picked earlier, um, as you probably noticed, the frozen ones weren't as ripe as these last ones were. The last ones were so ripe that when you reached in where there was a cluster of three or four of them, you picked one and then another couple fell on the ground. They were just ready to fall off the, off the bushes. And I'll bring you back once it's had its four minutes here. Well, it's finished its four minutes boiling and I've set the timer now for five minutes. The cool down and, and stirring process here doesn't cool down that much. It's still lethally hot, but the main reason, I guess, is to try to get rid of any foam on top. Well, as you can see, I never see this foam that they're talking about. I do do the five minutes of, of stirring, but uh, if there were foam, they tell you to skim it off and all that sort of thing. Well, that wouldn't bother me in the least. I would, I would bottle foam and all. I'm not trying to sell the stuff or anything. It's for my own use. So a little foam on top of the jar won't hurt anything. So in five minutes time, or less now, four minutes time, I guess, we should be ready to put it in the jars. Finished the five minutes of stirring after the heat was shut off. Now I'll see how much of a mess I can make trying to get it in a jar. I'm forever dripping this stuff, but oh well. That's for the, that's for the cleanup crew, and that's also me. So. have been also sterilized hot water. I do my jars in the oven if you haven't watched one of my videos before. I wash them, put them in the cold oven and turn the uh, oven on to preheat to 350 degrees. And once it's done that I just shut the oven off and let it cool. Three jars out of this. 
why I don't know, but that's what it said you should get. I will bring you back once I finish this mess and show you what I get. Well, I got two and a half of the pint jars, 500 milliliter. I just looked at the instructions again, and what it says is you will get five to seven of the 250 milliliter, so half pint jars, which I find a, a nuisance. I guess if you're making it to give away or, or whatever, it would be okay, but I don't like a lot of little teeny jars, so I go with the pints. So actually, I did get enough for five of the 250 milliliters. So I guess their instructions still hold true. And I'm quite sure that I will go pick enough berries to get another half cup of mashed berries and do a second batch. This particular batch in the, the bit that's left behind in the pot that I was cooking it in is gelling very nicely. So I'm quite confident that it's going to set up and be a good a good jam. Well, Angel and I went for a little walk and I picked this container full of more blackberries. It says on the bottom, it's one of those Ziploc uh, containers, it says on the bottom that it holds 1.75 cups, so one and three quarter cups. And I filled it, so I guess if I crush those in with the ones that I've already got, that should certainly give me another half cup anyway of crushed berries, or maybe even more. I won't take you through the whole process. <laughs> We've gone through that once, but I'll show you what I get when I finish making the second batch. Well, the second batch was just like the first batch. It made two more pint bottles, and I had enough left to finish filling that uh, half pint from the first time. And that is this one here on the end. I don't care if it seals or not. I think I'll put that in the in the fridge for use first because it's, it had one batch in it half bottle that had already completely cooled and it did gel very nicely. I took a teaspoon and tried some of it. It's very tasty. There we are. There's my year's supply of blackberry jam. Thank you very much for watching.